morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and welcome to this uh, special keynote address from Tomomi Inada, chairperson of the Liberal Democratic Party Policy Research Council. My name is Martin Keeble, and I am the CEO of Credit Suisse in Japan. The Japanese economic and political environment continues to fascinate investors and observers. The challenge Japanese policymakers have faced in returning the economy to growth has been the subject of much debate. Today, the economic environment remains uncertain. Exports have failed to gain enough momentum to make up for the country's soft domestic demand, and stimulus measures have succeeded in buoying asset prices, but perhaps have not addressed the more structural concerns. Now, there are suggestions that the Bank of Japan's recent decision to adopt negative interest rates, a move aimed to increase spending and investment, could threaten the progress made since Shinzo Abe's election. The positive, of course, is that Japan remains resolute in seeking to find ways to address these issues. Policymakers from across the political spectrum accept the seriousness of the issues Japan faces, and there continues to be vigorous discussion about what solutions should be employed. At the heart of these discussions is Tomomi Inada, chairperson of the LDP Policy Research Council, a position she has held since September 2014. The LDP think, think tank that she leads is a powerful and influential contributor to policy decision making in Japan, and its chairperson is acutely aware of the complexity, complexities of the issues that Japan faces. Inada-san is considered by many to be one of the strongest candidates to succeed Prime Minister Abe as leader of the LDP. In this keynote address, she will assess the country's prospects and provide her perspective on the opportunities and challenges facing the Japanese economy. Inada-san is, is a seasoned politician. Prior to her current appointment, she held the post of Minister of State in charge of administration and regulatory reform and was elected as a, House, as a member of the House of Representatives for the first time in 2005. Before entering politics, she was a registered attorney and graduated from Waseda University. Inada-san has very kindly flown here directly from Moscow, where she met with Mr. Denis Mantorov, the Ministry of Trade and Industry. We thank her for taking time to be with us here today. Please give a warm AIC welcome to Tomomi Inada. A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Tomomi Inada. I am a chairperson of the Policy Research Council of the Liberal Democratic Party. About uh, three and uh, three months ago, three years and three months ago, LDP took over uh, the administration. And we started the journey to the revitalization of the Japan, a powerful Japan. And then I would like to talk about today uh, for the what kind of a challenging area I have. And uh, at this mo moment, uh, well, policy research council chairperson. So that means I'm in the top position in terms of the research area. Uh, so that means uh, what we are doing is. Uh, constitute a uh, law and also the uh, tax system and many things that says there uh, is a policy and we come up with a data area and we propose to the government and then we uh, come up with a tax system so that is the uh, uh, law we have and then we have uh, uh, well promise to the uh, uh, particularly for the ones that they take the uh, LDP's position. Then after that, uh, what we are doing, uh, particularly I'm doing, uh, then we provide uh, the venue inside the LDP so that they can uh, uh, discussion. And uh, last year, we celebrated 60 years uh, since the LDP established. Uh, then on that uh, juncture, and uh, we really scrutinize and uh, look at uh, history. 
So that is the headquarter under the uh, prime minister. And uh, LGBT, there's a some, uh, some kind of the uh, area that we have to face. And particularly the uh, foreign uh, workers and would like to, yes, uh, capitalize their capability. And uh, 10 years, last 10 years, we need to really face uh, that uh, discussion. Uh, therefore, I came up with the venue to discuss establishing a, a committee. And also, we are uh, accused in uh, several areas, and we have to recover uh, that our reputation, and we establish a, a special committee. And currently, we are uh, 600 uh, trillion yen of the GDP. So I'm the headquarter, uh, and we are accelerating uh, discussion. As I mentioned earlier, and uh, three years and three months. So I'd like to touch on the journey that the uh, Abe administration took. Uh, therefore, the comparing to the uh, before Abe administration, well, uh, before that uh, Abe ad administration, uh, well, uh, when uh, opposition party uh, and he really challenged, and uh, it is uh, it is more like uh, really uh, yeah. wonderful things that uh, took over that uh, administration, and it is uh, uh, very important for him to look at uh, uh, diplomacy, and he's looking uh, uh, looking globally, and he visited uh, uh, various countries. And after myself become a chairperson of the Policy Research Council, uh, then I myself then visited uh, various country and meeting uh, various uh, uh, countries ahead and uh, uh, disseminated a lot of information, uh, his uh, thinking. And what uh, Mr. Abe uh, is really looking at at this moment, uh, really uh, he's uh, thinking about to become a center of the global economy. And uh, uh, security uh, law uh, is getting, a bit, getting better, and we had uh, a much more deeper uh, relationship uh, between the Japan and the United States. And uh, that is uh, well easy to say about the coalition with the United States, and uh, particularly the uh, United States, uh, they are protecting uh, Japan. But uh, when the Japan was, uh, yes, attacked, we cannot do very much. But it's, uh, I think that is we have to really look at our uh, constitution and uh, uh, particularly is the collective defense. And we have a peace-loving people, and we have to have a collective defense, at least the minimum level. And we realize that, and particularly the United States, that is a neighbor. Then the uh, United States is uh, really uh, doing uh, our activity to protect Japan. But uh, if we are ignoring, uh, then it is not uh, the, uh, welfare. So therefore, in order to have a better, closer, a deeper uh, relationship, I believe we establish a much better relationship compared to the previous uh, administration. In terms of Japan and Korea, and we had a uh, head-to-head -head meeting, and some of them say the Abe uh, administration is uh, ultra right or the nationalist, and sometimes they view. However, it is not so. Uh, he's uh, uh, taking a, a good balance, and at this moment, in the Japanese diet, currently in the discussion, and uh, TPP is in the discussion, and uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Abe uh, really. Uh, approved uh, in the principle and in the Pacific region. And uh, uh, well, order of the law uh, and the collective uh, defense and also the peaceful constitution uh, so that we can have uh, even the security area in uh, uh, Pacific and Asia. And uh, we follow the uh, rule of law. I think we are really uh, 
disseminating this kind of uh, uh, information to the world. And the last December, and uh, between uh, Japan and Korea meeting, and the comfort of women's issue was uh, quite uh, uh, serious. And uh, we reached irreversible agreement between the two countries. It is uh, very important, and it is very significant at the same time. Uh, what we have been uh, addressing, we have been uh, saying, and uh, under the law already uh, solved that issue. However, uh, some of the law more, and it, it is uh, not the fact. Therefore, we wanted to make sure, and we keep that position. However, uh, irreversible agreement, and uh, that is the uh, contributing the stability of the East Asia. And then uh, let me touch on the uh, economic uh, uh, policy under the Abe administration. Uh, let me show the first slide to you. And this is a comparison before Abe administration and after uh, Mr. Abe took over. And you can see the some numbers and in comparison, and particularly the corporate profit, that is a record breaking. And uh, employment area, uh, as you can see, uh, the increase. It is not only metropolitan uh, Tokyo, but we have uh, 47 prefectures. And you can see that the job to uh, applicant ratio also went up. And the nominal GDP area uh, well recovered to the before Lima shock. And uh, in terms of Nikkei stock average, yes, that is the highest in the 19 years. And although this uh, world at the moment is slightly lower, but it is a double. And also you look at the uh, central government as a local government, and not only the major city, but uh, local government, and including uh, small and medium enterprises. We have uh, 47 prefectures. And uh, we have uh, growth in the local government tax revenue. And not only these uh, numbers, uh, particularly the growth strategy, uh, that is a pillar. And the tourism is uh, quite important. And we are receiving a lot of uh, visitorship before uh, Abe administration. Uh, well, at that moment, well, 10 million was target, but uh, it was only 87 million. So that means, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 8.7 million. And now it's, uh, well, uh, 19, 19 million uh, businessship and reaching to the 20 uh, million. And by 2020, uh, it was uh, 20 uh, million, but we are going to uh, target 30 million visitorship to Japan. So that means uh, we already uh, close to the target of 2020. Then 2020, we just increased to the 30 uh, million. Uh, I'm sorry, 30 million. So that means uh, 2030, we are going to have a 60 uh, million uh, target. And also the uh, agriculture product export area. Uh, it is uh, close to the, uh, well, uh, less, than, uh, less than 300 billion yet. And uh, at this moment, it's a 752 billion. Uh, and we are looking at, uh, well, uh, close to the one trillion yen. But everybody said that we cannot uh, well reaching uh, one trillion, but uh, it is close to 800 billion yen. And so one trillion yen is not the, a dream for us. So as you can see, uh, those numbers like indicate that the uh, 
implies the success of the Abenomics. And also, you can see that the Abenomics has been quite successful and effective. We talk about like uh, three errors. And one is the drastic uh, the monetary policy. The second one is the fiscal, uh, the dynamic fiscal movement. And third one is the growth strategy. And the third one, this like third errors, come from uh, this uh, from the uh, the the story of this like a samurai or the the shogun uh, the story, and basically he had like a three sons, and like you know like you know if you have a three arrows and like you know, if you like launch those three arrows together and they don't get broken and you like you know actually uh, they hit the targets. I guess, you know, this is the same, uh, I guess, uh, the story. Uh, it derives from the same story, old story of Japan. So that is why the um, Abe, Prime Minister Abe is really, uh, he believes that it's really important to launch three arrows at the same time all together. And I think, you know, the third one, the growth strategy is probably the most important one. Even in this strategy, what's important or what's most important is um, and I was uh, actually uh, the regulation, regulation the minister. I think you know this uh, deregulation uh, is the very important thing. You know, redundant re regulation should be taken away and abolished. And then I think you know we can attract more uh, investment. We can actually free up our economy and the market. I think that's mo what's most. Uh, that's the most important thing. Uh, let's go move on to the next slide. And then, uh, as you can see, uh, this like a. You can see the stock market comparison uh, between Japan and U.S. and U.K. market and uh, the Abenomics. Once uh, since uh, this uh, Abe became uh, the prime minister, you can see the number pre-Abenomics, this uh, gray one. It was uh, under the DPJ uh, administration era, and meaning like when uh, LDP was an opposition party. The Japan was actually falling behind compared to uh, the UK and the US. You know, after the Lehman uh, the shock or the crisis, like we were, we kept staggering and also oh, uh, struggling for quite some time. But finally, we were able to catch up with the UK and the US after Abe, Abe uh, came to the, um, uh, the office. And at that time, you know, uh, I guess the US. Uh, U.S. economy gets like a cold, and then used to like be like a Japanese economy used to get pneumonia. Nowadays, you know, even like you know, U.S. Um, the economy catches hold cold. You know, we don't get as sick as like we used to. Uh, let's put it this way. Uh, the second one, uh, the third one, excuse me. I talked about the improvement of the environment. Um, employment in Japan and you can see the number of the employment itself is growing. But the one of the issues is that. This like the ratio between the official and the non a regular and full time and non full time are the workers and so called like a non regular worker is still one third of the total uh, I guess the uh, work work population so this like a non regular no regular worker is increasing so what I'm trying to say is like quality over quantity meaning like you know maybe the quality of the employment is not improving though like the quantity of the uh, the employment is improving so after Abe came into the office, you know, corporate earnings is getting better and also number of the employment is getting bigger. And I guess the wage has increased, you know, for cons three consecutive uh, years. But still, we see the larger percentage of like a non-regular workers. I guess, you know, Abe's like a, one of the key agenda is to uh, promote uh, the women's like a labor force. But uh, since uh, he came into the office, like an uh, additional 900,000 like women started working, but most of them fall into this like a non regular workers category. So therefore, this needs to be addressed. And I guess you know we need to improve the quality of the employment, and we need to like decrease the ratio of this like a non regular workers. He talked about equal uh, employment and also equal uh, the wage. And meaning equal labor, equal um, wage. Meaning, like if you do the same exact same work, you should be paid the same. And if there's a, like you know wage change or the difference, you know between like you know for the same job description, th there has to be leg uh, legitimate reason. So therefore, we need to do what's 
we believe that we need to really do the drastic uh, restructuring of um, uh, this like uh, employment system. And when I was a regulation. Um, Regulation, uh, the minister and I did like many I did uh, the regulations like such as the uh, the energy and also the the agriculture and also like a law and taxation system and everything and so therefore this employment improvement or the restructure is um, very essential in order to boost the Japanese economy. Let's move on to the next slide, page four. And uh, so you can see the working age population, and you can see the historical change. And this uh, working age population is decreasing, of course. This is the Japanese. In order to actually, uh, the, you know, hope uh, this like a latent or the pot potential uh, Japanese economic growth in the future, I guess uh, this is a you know kind of grim, uh, the dark picture. And so, therefore, in order to actually really see the economic growth, we can't just rely on the uh, the elderly and also the female uh, the workforce alone. So, therefore, we need to utilize and take advantage of um, the foreign workers. And uh, actually, we set up the tax force and. Uh, you can see the next page. Uh, this, I guess, the tax force, or this, like, in this committee, uh, we are discussing how we can utilize and take advantage of the foreign workers, and they reflect that um, upon the Japanese economy and maybe help our economy to grow. Uh, we have a uh, 60 million a working uh, the population, but the foreign worker is only less than one percent of this like 60 million people, and also uh, you can see this like a technical internship and the technical in. Uh, intern training. Uh, this like a two system needs to be uh, utilized and maximized. And then I guess you know we need to recruit more foreign uh, the labor force. And uh, under my leadership uh, in this uh, committee, uh, we are really um, uh, proactively discussing uh, this uh, how we can actually uh, implement this. And also, like uh, we would like to basically reflect that upon the next, I guess, the meeting that's going to take place, and also like uh, basically the strategic meeting which is going to take place in the 2016 this year, of course. And you can see the. Um, let's talk about the government debt, and we are actually the, the debt level is like a twice as much of our GDP. Uh, we are like you know very like a high debt country, and this is uh, this fiscal issue is very very important for our uh, administration. And when it comes to like uh, that, this like a fiscal, uh, I guess, uh, integrate uh, consolidation. People say I'm the like a far right winger, and we talked about this within our party. And I guess you know what was really interesting is that we talked about this uh, fiscal consolidation uh, the policy. Uh, the party came up compared to the you know the government's proposals. Our like party proposal was like more stringent. Usually. Like uh, because like uh, like when you discuss this in uh, the, within the party because like we want to all get vote you know we want to get elected so therefore like nobody really wants to talk about really strict drastic uh, I guess uh, fiscal consolidations uh, so therefore they don't want to talk about less spending or like you know more tax but you know this time it was what was interesting is the LDP side it came up with more like harsh other measures and also we talked about the numbers. In uh, in the old days, I did uh, lots of deregulations, like you know, we did um, civil servant, you know, uh, the deregulation, or like you know, structural reforms, and also the agricultural reforms, and that's what I did, and so it was like all of them are difficult. But you know, when you do this kind of like you know the um, restructuring, the reforms, like it's actually the target is always limited. Like if it's agriculture, like it's like if, again, you know, targeting the farmers and the civil servant, a civil servant. And but when we talk about this kind of fiscal consolidation the reform, basically the target is a whole Japanese nationals. So therefore, you know, we need to really show the tangible numbers. Otherwise, nobody would follow us and like, be convinced. You know. How effective, you know, this like a uh, debut would become. So therefore, I believe that I needed to put 
exact numbers and target numbers and also the actual numbers. So we needed to have this like, new medical target. And then if we actually do the implement um, uh, the reform and then we thought you know our primary uh, the balance would be positive by you know certain date and in last December we had a very heated debate and uh, we decided to like you know so because like we did this like a social security like a budget you know we were able to actually finally bring it down to like a below 500 billion level which uh, five, mm, uh, 550 billion level, so it's now like 44 billion yen. So and then also we're talking about like you know 10 percent, uh, the VAT, uh, the increase up to 10 percent in next year. But this like you know has been is still being debated. Of course, you know the Abenomics has been successful to a certain extent, but we have to think about how Japanese economy is going to have an impact on the global economy. So like, you know, Japanese economy has to like be intact. And that is why we are still like talking about whether that like this a further consumption tax should be uh, taking place. I guess, you know, we are facing like a, this very difficult uh, the challenges right now. We have to make decisions. Uh, like, uh, let me go to the next page. And this year, uh, that this is a BOJ has done Actually, they have gone into like an uncharted territory, meaning like they decided to implement this like a negative interest rate for the first time in Japan. And of course, uh, this issue it belongs to uh, the BOJ. So therefore, you know, we should not really comment on this issue as a ruling party members. But having said that, uh, basically getting out of deflation cycle and also the inflation target of like a two percent. So I guess, you know, in order to achieve this, like they do whatever it takes. And that is why they decided to actually introduce this like a negative interest uh, policy. I guess um, even within a party, and we are always wrecking our brain, you know, how we can actually maximize the impact of like uh, the negative impact on our economy and hopefully like you know we can boost our economy so i think it's going to be a long term issue it's going to take some time and let me talk about my future plan and outlook so i am the you know i guess the highest you know i'm in a I'm responsible position in terms of like uh, making the uh, policies uh, for japan and the ldp and also you know i'm doing my best to support, you know, the um, Abe's like uh, agenda and also his target. So what we are doing right now within uh, administration is like we have a new, three new uh, arrows. And, uh, one is like this, like um, so we like to basically bring the GDP to like six trillion yen. This is the highest level after the World War Two, and I guess the. Uh, this like uh, the latent though the potential growth rate is 0.4 percent so that needs to be actually enhanced enhanced so therefore we need to really restructure this like um uh the um, the employment system and also this like you know child rearing or child care support and also the social security that provides reassurance so I guess um, those like a new three arrows as as important as the first three arrows. So meaning they are like very very big targets and also biggest agenda. So we like to always say that uh, that we trying to utilize uh, this like uh, the uh, dynamic engagement of the Japanese all nationals. You know my like political philosophy is like uh, the tradition and also creation. The most difficult and most reforms needs to be, I guess, uh, promoted even more. Uh, this, like we talked about, you know, like a growth strategy, but this involves, and of course, you know, restructuring and the reforms and also deregulation. They need to be really addressed and properly and done. And I think, you know, what we need to also aim for is to like small government, small government and big society. Like we need to reduce this like 200 percent of the debt to like a GDP. So therefore, within limited physical capacity, we need to really have a priority. So that what needs to be done first and second, and then also the with the small government, small government basically support uh, the big society in a very effective and efficient manner. So rather than you know what 
and also the each Japanese national need to think about what they can do for the country and I guess they all need to be basically um, engaged and after I became the cool business uh, the minister you know I started wearing glasses and about because you know a cool Japan minister excuse me I actually my eyes I uh, sight so like you know perfect, but I'm wearing the glasses because like you know these glasses are made in my home country. So therefore, I was also awarded like you know best dresser award for my uh, for wearing the glasses. And also, you can see that you know my fishnet stockings that I'm wearing today. You know this also comes from the Japanese tradition of fishnet. You know uh, made uh, produced in Fukui. So I'm doing everything I can in order to like you know boost and promote like Japan and then also. I'm trying to be part of the member. Japan is not just trying to become the biggest, you know, economic country, but we need to be like, you know, have a really good high ethics and also be respected. And also like, you know, uh, the other countries are also like uh, facing uh, the problems such as uh, aging population, like uh, energy shortage, and also deflation. I think, you know, we should be the first one to address and get over those issues so we can be like, you know, are uh, the leader of the uh, the world, and also like um, yeah, the industrial uh, the restructuring, and also the employment restructuring, and also like you know human capital development. Those are the area Abe is really focusing on right now. So therefore. By doing all of things, you know, I think you know we can be the center of the global arena, and uh, in order to do that, I try to do my best. And thank you very much for your attention today. Thank you. Um, th th thank you very much, Inarasa, and that was uh, extremely interesting. And I think we got some good hints there of, uh, you know, some more. Um, some more parts of the, of, of the third arrow. Um, in the interest of time, I shall forego my right to uh, ask the first question and go straight to the floor. Um, we've got about nine and a half minutes left. Um, please do use a mic because we need that for translation. Um, so, gentlemen there. Are you comfortable with the uh, dollar yen levels uh, right now? <laughs> You gave me the punching question. <laughs> well, forex rate, for exchange rate. I would like to refrain from commenting. However, uh, at the G20, uh, as you heard, uh, exchange rate, uh, we do not uh, expect uh, too much up and down. And at this moment, and the current rate uh, is not reflecting the fundamental of the Japan. And uh, well, uh, those uh, uh, the comment you heard from and uh, Secretary General. Secretary, and if it's necessary, they will take those timely measures. That was his comment. Can I ask in Japanese? Okay, you mentioned about like uh, you talked about uh, this like a uh, three hours, and I thought that was uh, really interesting. And about you said that you mentioned about the employment. Uh, but is it realistic to use the foreign worker? I know. I think you know. Probably uh, this like employment issue is like a really difficult policy to change or like a uh, pursue. Yes, uh, for the first time, the prime minister uh, started using this uh, keyword, uh, the same work, uh, the same pay. And he's not just trying to improve the, the treatment or the, um, the wages for those like non-regular uh, workers. Uh, but I think what he's trying to say is like, you know, this like a Japanese uh, conventional employment system that's been out there. Of course, you know, there's some good, good, something good about it. But at the same time, it's like outdated. And also the liquidity of the labor market is very, very, very low. So therefore, in order, you know, why do we protect, you know, the, the pros and like, you know, good trace of like a Japanese employment system. But also at the same time, we need to increase the liquidity of the labor force. Also, the employee 
in the employer side, you know, their like awareness needed to be changed and it needed to be updated. For that, we need a reform, and this reform is a uh, quite difficult. But this uh, employment reform, and that's where we talk about it. After, like you know, basically you become redundant, and then I guess. Uh, and I guess, you know, if, like, they are, like, illegally fired and, like, you know, they can either go back to work or they can seek for the compensate, you know, even, like, you know, creating that sort of system law is very, very difficult. But we believe I dislike the labor system or the markets, like, are quite rigid, no liquidity. So I guess, you know, that needs to be really changed. And I think, you know, so I have, I'm determined to change, you know, the current environment, uh, sorry, employment system, excuse me. Do we have another question from the floor? One over there. Um, just wanted to ask for further thoughts on immigration and, and how palatable to the Jap Japanese society um, immigration is and how much you can increase this. Immigration policy, well, we get the resistance. Uh, quite a resistance. So currently we are discussing uh, in the LDP. As a whole, uh, we don't uh, take a migration uh, policy, but uh, as you can recall the slide, uh, like to, uh, yes, uh, imp looking at uh, where I think uh, the percentage is of the foreign workers. And in terms of the, uh, uh, those unskilled labor, uh, we don't recognize in Japan. But I think that we should look at the area as well. And the three allo, third allo, and particularly those security that provides a, a reassurance. And uh, because sometimes uh, you will see about 100,000, uh, they uh, resign the work because they have to look after uh, parents or, or the sibling. Uh, therefore, uh, not only the caregiver, uh, but uh, skilled labor as well. Uh, we, some of them are very much interested in uh, coming into Japan uh, so that they can uh, really play the role of caring uh, those elderly or the caring uh, nurse, nursing care. Uh, therefore, we have to uh, look at the system uh, for the particular those foreign workers. And as well as that, we have to look at the uh, educational area. And we have to really look at uh, uh, globalization internally. And sometimes, uh, well, they get very nervous when you hear uh, foreign workers. And however, we have to change the mindset and we'd like to have a sound discussion in LDP. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Um, how much does the external environment, especially a um, slowdown in China, impact um, your thinking about structural reform? Hmm. Right. Uh, Japanese economy is, is, of course, linked to global economy or the external factors. And then I went to Russia this time. I went to Moscow. And then we needed to, I needed to look into the economy of the Russia. I guess that's why I was there. Uh, economic, uh, economics hasn't failed, but still it's like, you know, progressing, you know, it's in, on its way. So whatever happens in a global economy, Japanese should be, Japanese economy should be able to stand on its own. So therefore, this like a global uh, the economy Actually, at the current, like you know, in the current situation, I think we need to really expedite, accelerate, you know, our structural reforms and uh, restructuring. But as for the BAT increase, the last time we increased by three percent, and uh, I guess consumer consumption plunged, and it hasn't really come back uh, to the previous level. So, if the global level is going to see another, I guess, you know, see that another crisis, just like a Lehman crisis, then we would have to reconsider about the, you know, 
postponing or the, uh, the increasing of the VAT. But looking at the current global economy, I think it's really necessary for us to expedite this like a reform uh, the process in Japan. Okay, well, one minute left, so time for one more gentleman at the front. Um, how do you see the uh, threat from North Korea to Japanese security and economic security? This year, North Korea. Well, a lot of the, of the I think it's a, a lot of things that are that happening, and uh, missiles are several times already. So nuclear uh, matter is quite a, a serious, and they are targeting uh, Japan. Particular Nodon is uh, launched, and what we have to think is. Uh, those nuclear uh, experiment, and uh, they are launching a missile. Then, and uh, they also abducted the Japanese uh, citizen, and they don't return those uh, Japanese uh, uh, people. And I think it's uh, the top of the North Korea. They have a unique hairstyle, but they are not really considering uh, those uh, what uh, they did in the past, not returning uh, abductee. So therefore, uh, we have to come up with a peaceful the constitution, a nostalgia, and a pacific. And so the deterrent uh, power is uh, very important. Thank you so much for joining us today. Please welcome. Please join me in thanking you.